Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of A BJJ, BJJ Marriage. Marriage, where we talk about our lives as a married jujitsu couple. You said that very quietly. <laughs> yeah, I was giving myself space on the um, the recording tour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we're live. Woohoo! Episode 76. 76. Like, 1776. Cheers. Murka. Murka. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode with your host, Nick and Brittany Lee. You know, we really should record a new intro. I did listen to it, and we do not say our names. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. We're just like, where we talk about our lives as a married jujitsu couple. Who are we? Doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so we've had a pretty exciting week, actually. Yeah. It's been a pretty good week. Mm-hmm. What I w- happened? <laughs> I don't remember. <sighs> but yeah, well, I mean, we should just jump right into it, right? About grappling industries yesterday. Ba-da-da. Yep. Okay. <laughs> So we had a there was a competition in Chicago yesterday for grappling industries, and no one else from Fluid competed except for Nick. Mm-hmm. I wanted to sign up, but I got injured a couple yep. weeks ago, so I wasn't ever able to sign up. And, and if I did, I would have. We didn't have a up. wedding to go to. Yeah. So that Shocking. worked out. <laughs> I know. We do have a wedding next weekend, though. Yeah, we do. But yeah, so Nick was the only one who signed up to compete in this one, and so it was actually just him and I that went. No one else. From Fluid came, but I mean, it's Chicago, so we don't really expect people to drive almost two hours. Yeah, but I feel like it's um, actually closer. It was an hour and a half to get to Chicago, and mm-hmm. it's like an hour, 45 minutes to get to the Dells. Yeah, but Chicago has tolls, and no one likes Illinois. Yeah, Illinois, Illinois sucks. Sorry <laughs> if you live in Illinois, but you know. You know it sucks. There. You pay your tax rate. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> we did go to Chicago for yeah. Grappling Industries, and I had four matches, mm-hmm. McGee and Nogi. Uh, yeah, two in the gi, two in no gi. Yep. And, uh... It's a good day. Doing all right. And whatever. <laughs> Don't be humble. You're allowed to brag now. I told uh, you to be humble before you... Yeah, but after you won your gi matches. And then I was like, he's got to stay humble for his no gi because it's different opponents. You never know. And yep. then he submitted him twice. So I think you can now have bragging rights. Go ahead. <laughs> I won all four matches. Woo-hoo! Woo! It was, uh... That's hot. <laughs> hot coffee yeah yes. holy cow that burned my tongue okay anyway um hey coffee hey, hey. <laughs> that's that's mandarin is it are you sure Ta he, he, coffee <laughs> sakai okay. how did that sound <laughs> never mind i'll take that back anyway um, yeah, I got three submissions and won one match by points. Mm-hmm. And, um, that was my four matches. And I... That's the end yeah. of the episode. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> no, had... it was really cool. He had, uh, he was in... Okay, so you signed up for Masters Purple yeah. Belt because that's technically what you are at age yeah. 30 to 40. It is Masters. And there was no one apparently signed up in Gi for that. So yeah. he got bumped down to the adult bracket. Yeah, which was cool because there were supposed to be three people in the bracket. So I was like, yeah, good match. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the people didn't show up. So it ended up being me and two other guys. So I had a match with each of them. And then I beat both of them. Um, and the gi went pretty well. Uh, I got takedowns in both matches. The first match was maybe like three minutes or so. And I got my first ever leg locking competition in the gi. Woo-hoo. Well, overall, but it happened to be in the gi. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, my first ever leg lock, it was a knee bar. Knee bar. I went for the knee bar. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like a super clean knee bar. If you're friends with me on Facebook, I'll probably post them actually on the BJJ Marriage page also um, on Facebook. But yeah, super slick setup for the knee bar. Mm-hmm. It was like... Textbook. textbook yeah it was really good and i used some of the concepts i learned at the gentle art camp to finish the knee bar on where to put the the foot and where to put my legs make a good leg sandwich is that from heather yes nice so that was super cool shout out i don't remember her last name i don't either sorry heather moving on we'll see you <laughs> sorry, again heather. in february yes <laughs> heather from etos mm-hmm. um 
Yeah, so I finished that with the knee bar, and then I had another match in the gi, and this was kind of cool because um, a couple months ago we had Joey Deal come teach at Fluid Jiu Jitsu, and he has a gym in Illinois called Real Movement Martial Arts, and he ended up cornering my opponent against me, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, hey, Joey, oh, yeah, this is my opponent, oh, that's cool, yeah, let's see what's going on, <laughs> and then... uh yeah, I ended up beating him by points. He was the only person to score points on me. No. Yeah, only person to score points on me throughout the day, right? Joey Deal's guy? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, good for him. I think he's the only one to score points on me in, um, like, last five competitions. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I couldn't submit him, but I had pretty dominant positioning. I did roll for a knee bar in that match also. Uh, we rolled out of bounds, and then they stood us up in the middle of the mat, which was fine. So then, um, you know, he almost took me down. I guess it's like you could say he did, but I pulled turtle kind of. So depends on if you call getting to turtle being a takedown or not. But anyways, that match ended. It was a full time five minutes, and uh, I won by points, mm-hmm. and that was my gold. In the was gi. it five minutes? <laughs> was it five minutes in nogi too? Yes. Okay. It was five minutes in nogi. Okay. So Heather Raftery. Raftery. I just spent the last minute trying to find that. So. Uh, yes. Heather Raftery. Yeah. She's a she BJJ awesome instructor, instructor from Atos, and she's a black belt under Andre Galvel, multiple time nogi world medalist, two time ADCC NA trials medalist, BJJ. Yeah. Yeah, BJJ Globetrotters instructor, and she enjoys driving her Volkswagen bus cross country, cat memes, and making grown men cry. That's yep, her bio. I could see it. So if you'd like to learn from Heather, come to the June camp next year. No, July. Labor Day. Labor Day. That one. September. No. The summer camp. Summer. Labor Day. What is that? Well, whatever. That one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Labor Day. It is Labor Day. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that was my gi matches. No gi. I had one guy in my bracket, so it was best out of three. And that was a Masters 170 purple belt no gi division. And we got out there, and I was actually really impressed by the ref, because he made sure we understood the rules, and he told us specifically what was allowed, what wasn't allowed. And he also said, and you know what, guys? It's a small match, so try to keep it in the middle. Don't go out of bounds, and don't waste your energy. And I was like, I appreciate that. And I think I did that (laughs) because uh, the first match, my opponent ended up pulling guard right away. I could tell he wanted to get under me and he wanted to get to my legs. And I was, and he had a really good Kimura trap actually from butterfly guard. So I had to deal with that. I ended up going around a bit and I did a good job at controlling his ankles. So he couldn't pull me into triangles because he was all legs. Mm -hmm. Before you guys even started going, I looked at his opponent and I was like, he's going to try to triangle you. And he was like, really? And I go, look at his legs. He's going to try to triangle you. Don't get there. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah, fair. And then he did. He tried to triangle you. <laughs> that was another match, though. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, he was going for a triangle. I could feel it. So I was controlling his ankles. I went to – I tried to get out of that Kimura threat, which I did. And then we went into, like, a almost reverse deep half where it's, like, my ankle was on his shoulder and I was sitting in his guard, but it wasn't quite 50-50. And then he ended up spinning that leg over. And then we went into, basically, I had an outside Ashi on him. Both of my feet were out. And I had the uh, middle control. And then I grabbed an ankle. And then I used an ankle lock that I learned from Josh Janis at um, <laughs> one of the camps. I think it was a firewater camp in February. Okay. I learned that straight ankle lock uh, where you put the shin in. Remember mm-hmm, that one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was the February one. That was at Neutral Ground. Yeah, the February one at Neutral Ground. Mm-hmm. Fire and Water Camp. But yeah, I learned that straight ankle lock from Josh, and I've been working it ever since. And I actually just taught it two weeks ago at Fluid. Joey Deal also just showed us some ankle locks, too. Joey also showed us some ankle locks, yeah. I've been studying leg locks a lot in the last, this year, actually. Mm-hmm. This whole year has been like leg lock study year for me. But anyways, so I got that straight ankle lock, and then like I had a good bite on it. And then he wasn't tapping. And you can see in the video, I pause for a second. I look at him. And then I go harder on it. And then he taps. And I'm like, okay. Well, what did he say to you? 
And then he said, you're going to take my ankle home, weren't you? I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No it doubt. Was, it was cool to watch. I Because so I my angle from the coaching chair, I only saw Nick's back and then the ankle kind of like popping through underneath the armpit. But I couldn't see his opponent and his reaction and his faces because of where I was sitting. But I did see that once you had the straight ankle lock kind of locked in, that he just sat there. Kind of like you do in a gym, like yeah. waiting for it like, to hurt. What are you going to do? <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure he was just sitting there like, either I'm going to tap or I'm going to wait for you to tire yourself out. And that yeah. was his thing. But Nick had it pretty tight. So I don't know why he didn't just tap right away. <laughs> but yeah, he sat there and he was like waiting to just. <laughs> yeah. And you can see I paused because his hand came up and then I just like, I was rolling towards, you know, belly down to make mm-hmm. it tighter, but I didn't have to even get there. That could have been a tactic of his though, too. To, right. like, trick you to be like, I'm about to tap to get you to kind of, like, loosen up or change right. your angle, and then he could have escaped. I mean, I do that. <laughs> yeah. It's a tactic for sure. Yeah. Like, your dad fake gurgles. Yeah. When people have chokes in, so mm-hmm. they're like, oh, I'm going to squeeze harder. Mm-hmm. And then you burn out your arms, and then you <laughs> did not choke a black belt. Sorry to inform you. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah, that was my, also my first straight ankle lock ever in competition. Nice. That's so, exciting. that was super fun. And then my last Nogi match was the same guy, and um, he told me to expect the same shit, and I was like, okay, whatever that means. <laughs> and then... We didn't um, know what that meant, because you were just like, well, I just beat you, so if I, I have to like, expect that, okay. I was like, sure, I guess. <laughs> um, but then he didn't pull guard this time, and I was like, all right, bet. So then... I, so he lied to you. Yeah, he did lie to me. <laughs> He was trying to throw me off, I think. Mm-hmm. But he stood up with me, which was cool because I love fighting for takedowns. And I was um, off the gun. I got a collar tie, and then I shot for a single leg, picked up his leg. He did a really good job bouncing around on his one leg defending. Um, so I tried to a knee tip. That didn't work. Then I tried a, an inside trip with my close side leg, and that didn't work. And then I did an inside trip with my far side leg, while throwing his hips over, and that did work. So that was four takedowns in a sequence to get him down, which um, I can't remember who told me. I don't know if it was Brent or Jason Bergman or a combo of them, but they said um, if you're, like, an okay wrestler, you can defend one or two takedowns. If you have, like, elite high-level wrestling, you're going to defend, like, four takedowns or so in a row before you get taken down and if you're like an olympian wrestler you could probably defend five or more takedowns in a row before you get taken down so that's a a big concept that i always take into my stand-up game is like never stop trying to take them down just keep cutting angles keep finding something because they can only defend so much Mm -hmm. before they go down and that's exactly what happened because it wasn't like super clean but it was like consistent attempts Mm -hmm. to take them down that got them down Yeah, because as soon as you stop moving, they have the upper hand on you, and you Mm -hmm. are now in a defensive position because you've stopped moving and they are still moving. So Mm -hmm. you have to constantly be going at them. And even if you suck at takedowns, if you're putting forward that momentum, they have to respond to it. They have to. They get taken down or they fight you, and either way, you are leading the charge. That's right. That's what what I tell, like, um, kickboxing people or especially when I'm teaching kids. Like, okay, we're going to start this combo with the jab. And everybody's like, oh, the jab does nothing. And it's like, no, because if you don't respect the jab, you're going to get punched in the face. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So the jab sets up all the power punches and all the rest of the combo. But, yeah, work your jab because they have it. Your jab should be good enough where they have to respect it, they have to defend it, or react to it somehow. Yeah, and that's how takedowns are too. Mm -hmm. And I remember... That's why I started with takedown with double or single leg. Mm -hmm. Just always try it, and if it fails, there's more there. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I remember one of the main takeaways that I took from one of our guys at Fluid, his name, shout out Adam to, to Adam Matson. He taught me that if you go out there with more aggression, then your opponent just is, they won't know what to do because they probably have yes. less aggression than you do if you're planning to go out there aggressive, and that's kind of what you did, is you went out there with the aggression, you set the tone of the match almost immediately. Yes. And once you do that, they, again, they just have to respect it. Yes. 
And I remember, like, with one of my matches, I went at her, like, 100%. Like, I, re- I remember saying right before the match, I'm like, I'm going to attack this girl. <laughs> and I just went. <laughs> and I had I didn't really have, like, a game plan because I was a white belt. But I yeah. was just like, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to do, do what I can. <laughs> yeah. And then I remember showing Adam that. And Adam was just like, I loved the aggression. I loved Did you see her face? She was so scared. And I was like, yeah. Hell so yeah. when I saw you do that to your guys, it actually brought a flashback back. Where I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And, and I had to tell Jessica that, too. Uh, I had a friend from one of our gyms here in Milwaukee at Rufus Sports. She was competing, and I've rolled with her many, many times. She's one of my, I would say, good friends in the jiu-jitsu community. And I saw that she was about to go up, and I saw who her opponent was, and I had seen her opponent compete before. And I know that her opponent was a super aggressive, go get em type of person. Mm-hmm. And so I went up to Jessica right before the match, and I was just like, hey, have you competed against her before? And she said, no, I haven't. And I was like, okay, here's here's a little backstory. I have seen her compete, and she is going to come at you. So you need to go at her harder. Yeah. And she was just like, oh, okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm serious. She has a lot of aggression, and she's going to try to jump you. You need to take the upper hand and go for her first. And she was like, okay. And then she did it. And yes. I was so stoked. And then she fireman carried her. It was amazing. It was actually a judo throw, but it was like kind that's, of a fireman. Cool. It was so cool. I love to see it. Love to hear it. Mm-hmm. And she beat her, which yes. made me even happier. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Go Jessica from Rufus Sport. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of Rufus Sport people there. Yeah. And a lot of friends. But let's get back to the match, and then we can talk about other stuff mm-hmm. about the competition. So, yeah, I did end up taking him down, and um, I was in his full guard. And then I had this problem of letting people put me in triangles, which is not fun. (laughs) (laughs) But thankfully, I've been in lots of triangles in my five years of grappling. And he was not able to finish the triangle. And he wasn't able to secure any real grip on my um, arm that was inside the triangle. I was doing a good job at putting pressure on his legs, kind of getting him tired a bit. And then I knew that he was like a leg guy. So to get out of the triangle, instead of just like, you know, brute forcing my way through the triangle, I, um, my leg, so my close side leg of the arm that was trapped in the triangle, I started just creeping it up towards him so that he would like grab it. And I I ended up throwing my leg over his face. So it was undeniably like on top of him. And, you know, it is a good defense if I can crawl all the way around the body to unwind myself from a triangle. So that's what I was going for. But I was also like, here, take my leg. Let's see what happens. And then he was like, oh, look, a leg. <laughs> and then he let go of the triangle to go for my leg. It's like candy. <laughs> yes. And then I used that moment, uh, that scramble, to I got into, in like less than five seconds, I moved from crucifix to back when he just tried to scramble because he tried to like roll grabbed my leg, and then he ended up in turtle, and then I ended up pulling him down to the ground. But yeah, it was like crucifix, and then back attack right away. And when I got to his back, I had one hook in, his arm was trapped under my hook, and I had my arm under his neck already. And then I was like, wait, this competition, let me get my other hook in to make sure I get my points, secure this back, and keep his neck, keep my arm under his neck all at the same time. I did that, and then I um, put the, the... the strangling pressure in to the rear naked choke with everything locked up. And uh, he tapped pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yes. Yeah, it was all really cool. I did it. It was cool to watch. Very clean, yes. flawless jujitsu all around for all four of your matches, I would say. And then Except I got my choke. gold medal. Woohoo, no gi gold medal. Yes, that loop choke. We'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> so it was really funny when I got this um, no gi gold medal because my opponent was wearing the leopard fuck Craig Jones shorts. And I thought those were Craig Jones shorts. Yeah, they were Craig Jones shorts. So, you know, I was expecting leg attacks anyways. Just mm-hmm. whatever. Just because of that. I was like, Craig Jones shorts. Okay, yeah, he's going to try to get under me and attack my legs. Okay. Um, anyways, so we went up to get our medals. And he knew the guy at the medal stand. And he was like, how'd you do? And then he said to the medal guy, he was like, in true Craig Jones fashion, I took second place. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even hear him say that. That's hilarious. Well, I don't know if you were at the metal table with I us. heard him tell the metal guy that, because uh, the guy was like, how'd you do? He's like, oh, this guy kicked my ass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. I laughed at that. I, mean, I really appreciate that humor. 
<laughs> that was super fun. Yeah. Yeah, but he was game. He was good. Like, it wasn't easy. Like, I definitely had to put out jujitsu, and I had to, um, you know, be aware of the Kimura threat, the triangle threat that he had put me in, and be aware of leg positioning. Yeah. But, well, that's um, what happens. I was telling you that's what happens when you get higher up in rank is that, mm-hmm. I mean, you're going against purple belts and intermediate, it could have technically been a blue, purple, or even a brown, honestly. Right. And you don't really know because it's no gi, so you just have to kind of be prepared for any anything. And mm-hmm. it kind of helped that he was wearing Craig Jones shorts because I do feel like that gave it away of what he wanted to do. But yes. <laughs> yes, for sure. But yeah, it was super fun. And she had brought up that loop choke. I have an affinity for loop chokes. But I feel like there's a couple things that happen with that loop choke. First off is I've done it so much at the gym that I've shied away from loop chokes so I can focus on other things. And I feel like the time I've taken away from loop chokes has made them less sharp as they've been in the past. So there's that. And then secondly, I was extremely impatient in the gi when I got to his back and I got a collar. And I was like, yes, I'm going to loop choke him. And then I executed a sloppy loop choke that he was able to get out of. And then I ended up going back to mount, which was fine. But um, I got to remember, I'm going against, like, game purple belts that are here to compete, and I can't just be sloppy and go for shit because I feel like I'm good at it. Mm-hmm. I got to go for what is available to me at the time mm-hmm. instead of what I want to do. Right. And that was a big takeaway. We did see a really shoddy loop joke from a couple blue belts, though. It was, I didn't. I, I don't remember. I don't think you were watching, but I was watching in two bigger, bigger guys. I, they had to be, like, probably 200, 210 or so. And they were going against each other as blue belts. And the one dude got his back hooks in and he put him belly down, but he went for a loop choke. And he literally, like, yanked on the (laughs) collar as hard as he could. So he was lifting the guy's whole body off of the ground. And he was just pulling. And you could see every muscle in his arm and his teeth were gritting. And, like, he was really yanking on that loop choke. Oh, my God. And I was looking at the guy who was getting choked and i put that in air quotes because it was literally over his face it wasn't even on his neck oh and I'm you did like, say that and i was just like you're a you're a blue belt and you're cranking on that as hard as you are and you don't even have it in the neck <laughs> like, <laughs> what like are, you, doing, are you kidding me and i get it competition's a different game like your your head space is everywhere and you're under pressure and you're just trying to win and like i get it like your your brain is elsewhere when it's come when it's competing versus the gym but like yeah that choke was clearly not there and the fact that he held it for, I'm not even kidding, it was, like, at least 25 seconds. Oh, my like, God. Like, at least he was cranking on that. And, like, that dude's jaw probably didn't feel very good, but it wasn't enough to tap in a competition. <laughs> Damn. So, he's probably, like, and I bet you that it wasn't even on camera because he was facing the other way. So, whoever was recording was probably only getting, like, the back so they could only mm-hmm. see that he was going for a choke. But I could see on the other end of the mat that it, that was, it was just, like, the- over his face. Like, yeah. And he was just, like... Yeah, it was, like, right over his mouth, and I was like... That's the worst. Hmm. But, I mean, that sucks for him, but he's not going to adapt to that, and it's been 25 seconds, dude, so you should probably let go. Probably has a bloody lip now. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> probably. Yeah. But, uh... So clean up your loop chokes. Yeah, friends. well, and don't be impatient. <laughs> yeah. Like, set things up and take what comes to you in competition. Right. And that kind of goes into the topic that I wanted to talk about today, mm-hmm. or that we want to talk about today, is uh benefit of flow rolling Mm -hmm. yeah flowing so unfortunately since i got injured it's been four and a half weeks now i haven't i wasn't able to roll for the first four weeks i didn't roll really at all i just stayed off to the side and it wasn't until about a week ago that i got back on the mat to just flow Mm -hmm. and for those of you who maybe flow rolling is different in every school but the Mm -hmm. way that we do it is that it's a catch and release so like you just are moving and that's all you're doing is you're just constantly moving and so you still build up a good sweat you're still doing a good workout but you're not putting any pressure down on the person you're Mm -hmm. not going to try to hold anything you're not trying to submit them if you grab a limb or you grab a choke you let it go immediately like you Mm -hmm. just let them know the threat is there and then you let it go and, and that's, move on. yep. And that's how you can get those reps in. That's how you can get your good workout in. That's how you can continue learning even when you can't handle the pressure like me right now. Mm-hmm. So like my chest is super, super broken where like even laughing kind of hurts still. And so I can't handle jujitsu right now. Like I would, I actually asked our friend Dave to put a little bit of pressure on me just to see how far I could take it. And it was barely anything. So I've only been able to flow for the last week. 
now that I'm finally getting back on the mats. And mm-hmm. it's been really beneficial for my training because then I'm able to still keep my brain engaged. Yes. And I'm still able to get a good sweat in, but I'm not like training for competition anymore. <laughs> yeah, right now you're not. You're training to re- re- rehab yourself. Mm-hmm. Words are hard to say. <laughs> You're trying to rehab yourself to get back to the mats in full force. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. But there's like, there's so many ways and reasons to flow roll. So like me, I'm flow rolling because I'm injured. Mm-hmm. Uh, white belts like to go to flow class because they want to learn how to get better and more fluid in their momentum rather than just being a brute the whole time. Mm-hmm. Nick was flowing this week because he didn't want to get injured before competition. So mm-hmm. he was training more in the flow state so that he was able to keep drilling, but without hurting or getting sore before his competition. Mm-hmm. And then other people like to flow just because it's good on their body and it's better than trying to hold something down and trying yeah. to always win. And it's just more about getting in that repetition. But there's lots of reasons and ways to flow. That's just kind of how we did it. And that's what we wanted to talk about. It. Yes. So, um, yeah, you brought up a lot of good points. And we'll t- dive into a bit of that more. But number one thing that I think is beneficial for flow rolling is the transitions that you find from position to position with little resistance. So when I flow roll, it's typically like 10 to maybe 30% tops of movement, 10% to 30% tops of movement. And if I find any sort of submission or whatever, it's catch and release, like she said. Like you put yourself in the position, but you don't put any breaking pressure onto it. You just move on from that position as if they were escaping or as if you wanted to move to something else. But the transitions are super important. Because how often have you ever heard in your um, jiu-jitsu career when when you're saying, how do I get out of this position? And they always say, don't get there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. The transitions is where you learn how not to let people get there or how you learn how you can get there or where you want to get more fluidly. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> There's no fluid sign over here. We should get one of those. <laughs> A sticker. You probably should. <laughs> uh if you want to sponsor this podcast, we'll put a sticker right here for you. <laughs> Brent. No, <just> <laughs> um, so, yeah, the transitions that you find in flow rolling without that resistance and without, without the threat of getting submitted for putting on a bad transition is hugely beneficial. Mm-hmm. And I will say that flow rolling helped me tremendously in my last competition because there was no position where I was unsure of where I should go next. Like there was one time I paused in this last competition and that was when I was trying to decide if I wanted to, when we got stood back up, when I rolled out of position, if I wanted to take him down or pull guard. Other than that, I had some route laid out in my mind. I should go here. This is, this is a more beneficial place for me than where mm-hmm. I am right now. Mm-hmm. And that comes through flow rolling and knowing, okay, I've done this way in the past and it was worse for me. Uh, I go this way and it's better for me. Yeah. And that's also the beneficial part of flow rolling is that you can learn those momentums. And so, I mean, we went to another competition right after yours yesterday. We did. We went to coach somebody in, in Milwaukee. Yeah. Right after our competition ended in Chicago. Yeah. But we were watching him not really cut the angles that he could have been doing to make the submission better. Mm-hmm. And that's something that flow rolling can do for you is it can really teach you how to cut those angles more. And instead of just like trying to rip on that arm bar, or trying mm-hmm. to grab those legs, like you're focusing on position over submission. And that's the best part about flow rolling is exactly that position over submission, because you are literally not trying to submit them. You're just trying to get where you can submit them mm-hmm. if it were a real sparring session. Mm-hmm. And you can do it backwards too. You can, Work towards seeing what is worse for you so that you know what not to do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because half of jujitsu is learning what not to do over and over until you learn what to do. And you can start in bad positions while you're flow rolling too. Yeah, there's no threat. Right. Like you can start in bottom mount and not have a panic attack. You can start in bottom side control and figure out how to get your frames in. And still work your hips and start trying to wiggle and get out of it without having someone literally trying to hold you there. Because they're just letting you work and letting you move. And then you do that and then you let them do it. So Mm -hmm. basically it's like you get into a position, 
you get out of it, let them get into a position, let them get out of it, and then you just keep going back and forth like that almost the whole time. Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty good cardio workout also Mm -hmm. because you're using your whole body and Mm -hmm. you're rolling around, but you don't have to worry about the threat of getting hurt. You Mm -hmm. don't have to. I mean, sometimes like elbows and knees go places and that always happens, Mm -hmm. but it's not like you know, when you're, you're really trying to hike that knee up and then you slap him in the face with a hard knee, mm-hmm. it's more of like you both moved and it, there was a little clunk mm-hmm. and it was like, Oh, oop. <laughs> I think Versus, can... Oh, right. Give me a second. <laughs> like Brody. Uh, I think you can also focus a lot on what works and what doesn't, because I know that even just this week I was doing leg entanglements with my friend Megan Because we both have a rib injury, so we didn't really want to flow together in case, like, one of us ended up somewhere where we shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. So we were just like, let's just leg pummel. So for five minutes, we just leg pummel. But And at first, I was just like, am I going to really get anything out of this, like, if we're not doing much? But those five minutes, like, really showed me, like, where you should put your leg position in order to not let them escape. And in order to be above the knee line rather than below the knee line, what your foot position can do on the hip in this way versus that way. And... Mm -hmm. That was also like a good flow drill is just doing it for five minutes straight rather than like two or three reps. It was just able to help my brain recognize like what you can do and what you can't do. And that's the same if you're like live flow rolling and you want to go for a catch and release type of system where you catch an arm and then you let it go. But Mm -hmm. maybe you try to go for that arm and you didn't grab it because the way that they flowed out of it, you didn't respond to it Mm -hmm. the way that you wanted to. And so now you're like, oh, well, why didn't I catch that arm? And then you can go back and you can keep like just drilling that position because you know that they're not going to fight out of it. Right. Yes. And you find what stems out of that position also. Because mm-hmm. sometimes like you get into a good arm bar position and people are just like solid and like, oh, I'm not going to break this arm right now. <laughs> I've got to go do something else. Yeah. I either want to sweep them or get on top or go to yep. triangle or omoplata or you find those different pathways based on how people defend certain things. I feel like it's also just a really safe way to learn jujitsu. And it's a really safe way to try really difficult movements and know that neither one of you are going to get hurt from it. And you're not going to get punished for doing something dumb in flow roll. Yeah. Because, like, there's lots of moves where if I'm under somebody and they decide to, you know, slam all their weight down on me because I'm picking them up, I've been, like, inverted and had knees go directly into my skull, directly into the ground. Because people feel like, oh, I don't want him under me. I'm going to drop my weight. And um, I can do that a lot more comfortably in flow rolling than I can in regular rolling. Because I know that they're not worried about me, like, you know, winning the battle Mm -hmm. or winning the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that. So I was flow rolling with uh, Brown Belt this week. Shout out to Nate Ziegler. And I know that with him, I was trying, like, really weird stuff that I would not try if I was, like, trying to not get armbarred. <laughs> oh, sure. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. if I was afraid of getting submitted, I probably would not try half of the stuff that I did with him. But because I knew that we were just flowing and we weren't going to try to kill each other, I was like, yeah, I'm going to dive, like, over there. And then there was one point that I ended up, like, two feet away from him. And I was like, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> And he just yeah. left and yes. I was trying a lot of like inverted leg entanglements and stuff where I knew that my like foot would get shucked off or he would just like pass my guard really easily or things like that. But just so I could like get into that momentum of being in uncomfortable positions, but without the pressure, mm-hmm. it was, it was very fun role. But yeah, there was literally one point that I dove for something that was totally out of my reach just to see if I could do it. And I ended up like all the way over here. It's like, mm, that didn't, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. <laughs> No, that didn't work at all. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. And yeah, flow rolling is super fun too because it's like it's like a little mini game. You're just doing a bunch of movements and it's fun and flowy. Where are we going to end up next? <laughs> yeah. And what I are they going to do from here? What am I going to do from here? Yeah, right? I feel like it's just easier too because you don't really like have a – I mean, maybe some people do, but I don't really have a game plan when I'm flow rolling. Like I'm not – going i'm not flowing to win and i'm not flowing to submit and i'm not flowing to like i just don't have a plan like i'm just yeah i'm flowing to move and i'm flowing to get the reps in and i'm flowing to get better at jujitsu not to yeah. win the match i would say for me it's like 80 percent of the time i'm flowing to have fun 20 percent of the time i'm flowing to certain positions to see what people's reactions to them are and to see how well i can 
get to that position from mm-hmm. different places. Mm-hmm. Trying to create pathways from, you know, deep half to X guard or uh, K guard to X guard mm-hmm. or butterfly to X guard or everywhere to X guard. <laughs> That's the other thing is you can work on maybe something that you want to work on a little bit better. Like Nick and I have been working on K guard. For the last, I mean, I've been doing it for the last week, but he's been doing it for a couple of weeks. And flow rolling is a good way to figure out the entrances into K-Guard. Because mm-hmm. when you're live rolling, I mean, they're not going to just let you do stuff. Right. But when you're flow rolling, they will. So you can figure out what way it works for your body, what way you can move, and what way you can't, and how the entrance opens up for you. So mm-hmm. I was playing with K-Guard a lot this week, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I love K-Guard. Mm-hmm. Um, that's fun. Yeah. But I think it's super beneficial, and I know that... So we actually have a flow class at Fluid on Sundays. Unfortunately, I have never been to it. I don't think you have either. But I have. Have you? Once, I think. Really? I feel like I've been there at least once. Okay. Maybe I have to. I don't know. It's on Sundays, and we typically don't train on Sundays. So, uh, But Sundays is a flow class at Fluid, and basically the way that I am... I am understanding because i don't go is that ellie and mike coy they like to teach a like i guess a what is the word i'm looking for they want to go through a bunch of motions yeah a sequence there we go they want to go through like basically take them down past the guard get into this position and get the submission let go like that kind of thing and so once you can just drill that into a repetition and i guess have that plan in mind then it can become more stabilized in your brain of like when you're live sparring like oh i did this in flow i can do this now Mm -hmm. type of thing rather than just like moving to move it's like i guess flowing with a purpose and figuring out where to go and what to do and getting those drills in yeah which i think is cool yeah it's super fun to train those different sequences and like i said earlier build those pathways that go from position to position Mm -hmm. super beneficial and yeah it did make me comfortable more comfortable in competition from just, if you've ever rolled with me, you know that we've been in weird ass positions that you've probably never been in with someone else. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just comfortable anywhere thanks to flow rolling. Mm-hmm. So and I would, studying, obviously. Yeah. I would say that. Okay, so we do flow rolling as a warm up in our classes sometimes. So instead mm-hmm. of doing like going down the mat and doing shrimps and forward sometimes. rolls and. Stuff Every like that. Tuesday and Thursday morning at 6 a.m., the warm up is flow rolling. Okay. You probably don't go with it. Well, you don't go I to don't those go classes. To but yeah, my warm up for classes is flow rolling for 10 minutes. Yeah. And then same with Wednesday Nogi, it's a flow roll. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm i sure they do it on Mondays too. But Mondays and Wednesdays. So Maybe. typically we do flow rolling as a warm up. And that just gets your blood pumping and it can get you like a little bit less stiff because when you haven't warmed up, like, doesn't really matter how good you are when you haven't warmed up. You're just probably not as good as you are when you are warmed up. Yeah. And so the flow rolling really just helps get you ready for class and ready for sparring. And I have heard countless amount of times from multiple people, including my own mouth. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> white belts don't like flow rolling. Mm-hmm. And I did not like flow rolling when I was a white belt either. And I have a theory And obviously it's different for everyone, but my theory is that as a white belt, you don't really know enough. You don't have enough in your library of jujitsu to be able to constantly be building off of that momentum. You kind of have like your one or two things that are your go-to and you have like your closed guard because that's where you feel safe and you have your one escape from every position, but that's about it. one submission that you like maybe. Yeah. And then once once that's taken away from you, you don't really know what else to do. Mm -hmm. And so when they're not threatening you and you have to think about what you're doing and they're just constantly moving you don't know how to keep up yes. because you don't really have anything else to build off of and that's not a bad thing that's just part of learning and so when i am flow rolling with white belts i typically hear from them like i hate flow mm. or or they're like i don't know what i'm doing and it's like it's okay like yeah. we're just moving like yeah. i just want you to move and do what feels Right. best to you i'm not gonna say natural because jujitsu is not natural but do what feels best to you do what you think you would do in this movement and i think that two white belts flowing together is just chaos but it's super funny <laughs> yeah so yeah. yeah i hear again more often than not that white belts hate flowing mm-hmm. yeah and the other thing that really helps with flow rolling is to never tense up because i've flow rolled with people before um 
that aren't from fluid. And I felt like an immense amount of tenseness where they like didn't want to let things happen or they held on to things for too long or they were just like holding, like stop moving. And it's like, that's not the goal here, buddy. Mm-hmm. I'm moving. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you want to move with me or not. I will spin on you for days. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm getting out of here. I'm moving around. Yeah. But it is super fun, and I think it's super beneficial. And I have noticed an improvement, too, that when a couple of our brute white belts have started going to flow, they've sac- they've calmed down. They've mm-hmm. actually Because now you know how your body works, or you're starting to learn how your body works, and you're mm-hmm. starting to learn more jujitsu movement like you're learning more jujitsu basically instead of just defense because that's kind of all white belts really have is they only have their defense mechanisms and that's really it and once you can learn that your body does move this way or maybe you can go this way to make it more fun and things like that that's when it really starts to become an art Mm -hmm. rather than just i need to get out of this right now (laughs) (laughs) yeah this is bad (laughs) i should not be here Mm-hmm. How do I not be here anymore? Mm-hmm. Yes. What's what I love about watching black belts roll together is because they've been doing it for so long that even when they are live sparring, it just looks like a dance. It looks like a flow, even yeah. though they are constantly putting each other in positions that are threatening and they are constantly doing great jujitsu to each other. It just looks like an art. Like watching John Friedland is just insane to me. Yeah. He just dances. Yes. <laughs> That's uh Part of my goal for jujitsu mm-hmm. is to never stop doing something. Yeah. That's yeah. how you're getting there. Yep. But that's not everyone's style. Right. Some people are just like, I am here. <laughs> <laughs> I will hold you here until you give up and then I'll move forward, <laughs> which is fine. But um, yeah, I love, I love that dance that happens in flowing. Mm-hmm. And I, like I said, I felt it in competition yesterday. Where I was just like, oh, yeah, we can go from here. This is fine. No matter where it was. And people were trying to, like, hold me in places, and they could not. Yeah. You're very (laughs) hard to hold down. Well, nobody ever got the attempt to hold me down. Actually, I think um, the guy from Real Movement Martial Arts, Joey's guy, tried to hold me down. But it didn't work. When you were in Turtle? Yeah. When he got that... Take down air quotes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I pulled turtle and then I went for an ankle lock immediately somehow from turtle. <laughs> um, that's probably attributed to flow rolling because I just like grabbed something and then worked towards it mm-hmm. because there was like 10 seconds left. And I was like, well, I'm going to threaten something so that he doesn't feel like he can try to pass my guard or something. So how was your flow rolling different this week than it would be in any other week leading up to competition? My flow rolling this week, like I said, most of the time, it's just for fun. This week, flow rolling was flowing through the positional game of Mm jiu-jitsu. So take down, guard pass, knee on belly, mount, back. The sequence. The sequence. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, like, I wouldn't go through that sequence every time. But I knew from whatever position I was in, what the next best position for me was would be in a competition. Mm Mm-hmm. So, like, if I'm in side control, okay, next goal is neon belly. I will flow to that. I'm in neon belly now. Next goal for me is mount. I will flow to that. And it helps. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you skip steps. Sometimes you flow right from guard to mount. Right. And you're like, okay, that's Mm -hmm. that fits the track that I'm aiming for in competition. Right. Yes. And then in defensive spots, sorry, but in defensive spots, it's like, okay, get myself out of this to a better position. So... If I'm in bottom mount and I can get to guard, that's better. Mm-hmm. So you flowed with your competition game plan. You yes. flowed drilling in light movements of how you wanted your matches to play out. That's right. I think that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if I was in leg entanglements, what leg positioning is better for me from where I am now? Mm-hmm. Or what can I scoop up from this leg entanglement? Because sometimes you're in dominant leg positions and you pummel into a worse one. Or sometimes they're in dominant positions and you pummel yourself into the dominant position Mm -hmm. instead of just, like, getting out of there. Right. Which happened in competition. Mm -hmm. Multiple times. It looked like a lot of your uh, movements in competition yesterday were more of a flow. I mean, it wasn't a flow because it was competition, but it wasn't like, like you said, no one was trying to pin each other down and hold each other there. You were just trying to win win the battle. Yeah, win the little mini games. Yeah. 
of and every position. I think that's cool because if you were to do a side by side comparison of your white belt divisions versus your purple belt divisions, like you see that difference. You see, mm-hmm. I mean, I even just said in the beginning of this, I saw two blue belts like mm-hmm. ripping it on each other. I mean, we also saw that guillotine from the blue belt. The there was a blue belt who was trying to guillotine someone, and his face, like he just looked angry, and he was gritting his teeth, and he was just holding with all of his might. And yeah. I'm like, wow. Like, that's not (laughs) jujitsu. Right. (laughs) That is you trying to kill that person. (laughs) Yeah, but it will make them tap. Yeah. So that works. But, like, that dude's feeling it tomorrow, and I don't even feel like I competed yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like, flow rolling is great because I get the positional awareness, and I get the workout, and, um, you know, it's fun. Mm -hmm. So three bonuses right there. But I know that anything I do in flow, I can just pour my uh, physical attributes into those techniques to make the return on it exponential Mm -hmm. right so yeah like you said um it looked like most of the stuff i did in competition was from the same things i would do in a flow position but the amount of um physical force i was putting into those movements was at a heightened rate than what it would have been uh, at the gym, just moving around with people. Mm-hmm. And you can always add more strength to your techniques if you need to. But if you don't have any technique, adding strength is not going to help anything. It's actually going to hold you back. Right. And then you'll just hold a loop choke on someone's lips. <laughs> yes. But yeah, I don't think there was a point in my matches yesterday where I held anything unnecessarily. Right. It was all different um, goals that I was working for. So like, I had some collar grips and I was standing up and I had a little, they had a little leg entanglement, but my collar grips were pulled tight so that he couldn't extend his shoulders away from me. So I could keep him crunched up and work towards my headquarters knee slice passing mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. That's kind of the other cool part about just getting better at jujitsu is you aren't holding on to anything for dear life. Like when you have right. those collars, you weren't trying to rip him down. You weren't trying to break his posture with all of your force and might. Like you were just like, I have this collar. What am I going to do with it? Yes. All right. If I have him and he moves, oh, he got out of it. Okay. We're going to keep going instead of just being like, where's the collar? I yeah. need to grab that collar. I had that collar. Now it's gone. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> that's kind of how most white belts feel in their competition mm-hmm. is they, I mean, if you look at any white belt, for the most part, any white belt in their competition, they are gripping for dear life because that's all that they can depend on is their grips. Yes. And Again, that's okay. We've all been there. I've done it. He's I've, done it. I've burned out my grips in competition where yep. it's like my fourth match in. I'm like, I can't hold anything anymore. Yep. And I know Karen just had that too with mm-hmm. her match. Like you mm-hmm. just, it's just something that you have to learn, which is why we always try to push you as a white belt to go compete so that you can feel that. And like, it'll help you get better at jujitsu, I promise. And if you learn that as a white belt, it's way better than learning that as a purple belt. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> And, like, even blue belts, like, they still also are just trying to just murder each other. (laughs) Yeah, it's, like, white belts that know a little bit, Mm -hmm. but are just, like, rah, I'm a white belt. Mm -hmm. Or, I'm a blue belt now. I know things. We're better than white belts. Let me do this. (laughs) Yeah. But, like, I feel like once you start getting into that higher ranking, like, higher blue belt and into your purples and then, obviously, browns and blacks, that's when you really start turning jujitsu into what's most beneficial for you. You're not going to hold on to that collar if it's not going to benefit what your plan is next. Mm -hmm. You're going to let go of it and you're going to go do something else that will help you advantage yourself. Yeah. And that's one of my favorite jujitsu lines um, straight from Master Sauer. He talks about submissions are a gift that are given to you. So you work through your positions and stuff, and when people make mistakes and submissions just appear, it's a gift. <laughs> like that knee bar. Like that knee bar. It was. <laughs> it was just right there. Yeah. And it was perfect. I saw your face when you looked at that knee bar. Like, oh, All a right. leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just hopped right into it. Kind of like when you gave your leg to the guy who was strangling you. He was like, oh, a leg. <laughs> yeah, but he wasn't as comfortable as I was. Yeah. Especially since he had already lost. True, true, true. Yeah. So speaking of Master Sauer, uh, he is coming to Milwaukee next yes. month, November 19th and 20th. He's doing a two-day seminar at Fluid Jiu-Jitsu. Mm-hmm. So tickets are going up in price within this week. I think the next week. So you should get your tickets now if you are going to come because Mm -hmm. they will get more expensive. Um, I will say I used multiple techniques that I've learned from Master Sauer 
in my past in the past mm-hmm. in the competition yesterday. Yeah, you so, did that that base that you did mm-hmm. that was Master Sour. Yep. Yep. He is a phenomenal, phenomenal teacher, instructor. He's, yes. There's a reason he's a coral belt, guys. <laughs> but he is seriously, like, you'll just learn magic from him. And I think it's a that gift. if you have not been to a Master Sour seminar, this is a great opportunity for you to not only meet him, but to enjoy his teaching. Because yeah. he just explains things so simply. And he, I, I can't recommend him enough. So yes. uh, he's coming the 19th and 20th. You can get your tickets on Eventbrite, we can post the link in the comments as yeah, well so that we you can find that. We'll put it on the events page on the website, yeah. com slash events. Yes. Um, but yes, yeah, so we have him coming, and I believe he's staying here with us again. Woohoo! So that'll be cool. Who knows? It's funny because my dad's like, he could probably stay with me. I'm like, no, you don't have a guest room. <laughs> Everything's a surprise to me. Yeah. It's a gift. So, yeah, we got that. And then before that, Nick has a pancreation fight coming. Oh, yeah. Yep. November 5th. Yeah. We actually, we have a lot of things coming up. So this week, uh, this weekend, we don't have any jujitsu events. We actually have a wedding. And then the next weekend, we have, there's Ben Schultz versus Mutter are oh, competing. Yeah, cage grappling. Yep. So we'll be, championship. we'll be watching that. But then the weekend after that, we're actually going to be in Colorado doing oh, yes. a seminar at Morningstar Jiu-Jitsu. So if you're from the Denver area at mm-hmm. all, yep. come visit us. We'll be there rolling. Yeah, I'll we'll be, be flowing, there rolling. I'll be ookie for a seminar. I'll be flowing. <laughs> uh, we get those high altitude workouts in. Right. Oh, we have a Halloween party coming up. That's an open invite to any school. So if you're in the Milwaukee area, we have a Halloween party on October 21st. It's so Halloween open mat. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's a Halloween open mat, and basically all that means is we just roll in costumes. <laughs> but you have to just get a costume that won't puncture or damage the mat. So, like, no zippers, no sequins, things like that. Yeah. No metal knives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then, so like I said, we'll be in Colorado. My dad will be teaching a seminar there over the weekend. So we'll be there rolling and doing a seminar and then doing a bunch of other Colorado stuff like hiking and going mm-hmm. to a concert in Red Rocks. And it'll be it'll be a fun time. Mm-hmm. And then we got Nick's pancreation fight on November 5th. Yeah. He's going against an open guard guy and it'll be super fun. If you want to see me freak out, you can <laughs> be there. <laughs> you want to see me punch, kick and grapple? Come, come watch it right. in uh, Waukesha. Outside of Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then we got Master Sour mid-November, and then there's another Grappling Industries tournament on December 3rd. So lots of stuff in the next month and a half. That, wow, that's very soon. Yep. We're in quarter four already. It's crazy. Woohoo! Episode 76. Right. Woohoo! <laughs> so, yeah, any other comments about flow rolling? I think we hit the nail on the head with that one. Yeah, I think, like I said, flow rolling just really made me super comfortable everywhere. And being comfortable makes you so dangerous mm-hmm. because people, you know, you've been rolling with somebody and you can kind of like smell the blood and you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this more now. <laughs> but if you can like never puncture their game, you're unsure if what you're doing is like actually affecting them. Right. And that can make you extremely dangerous as a competitor or as just a hobbyist or however you like to do your jujitsu but if you have no holes to puncture you're comfortable everywhere people are going to have a hard time with you right and you develop that confidence in your positional uh game through flow rolling Mm -hmm. yeah i agree i think that especially so i don't really flow roll Every day, I actually do like to roll pretty hard for the most part, but when you are being forced to flow roll when you're injured, I think it does enhance your jujitsu a lot and helps you be comfortable in uncomfortable positions, which I think we say Mm -hmm. every single week, but (laughs) it's like the basis of jujitsu, I would say. Yeah, but like, you roll with me. How often do I ever seem uncomfortable? Um, Not very often. Right. Only when I have you in a tight arm bar that you don't want to tap to. <laughs> this is true. When you're like 80% into an arm bar. And I'm like, oh, okay, I shouldn't be here. <laughs> this is bad now. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's funny. For but, yeah. sure. I must write uncomfortable positions a lot because it just auto-filled it for me. So, <laughs> thanks, Colin. Well, awesome. Yeah, well, I think that's good for today. And... 
believe we have a couple of guests lined up. We'll see how hungover we are from the wedding next week. I'm sure we'll record, but it might not be out Sunday. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. But also, uh, if you have never competed, and especially if you're a white belt, go out there and compete. Mm-hmm. The experience that you gain from every competition is unrivaled in the gym. You do not get that experience in the gym. Mm-mm. And if you've never done it before, try it and don't take it too seriously. Have fun and learn. Mm-hmm. And congratulations on your four wins. Thanks. Also, I sell a course to prepare people to uh, <laughs> compete. So if you're interested in working on your competition, I'll put a link in there also. Wink, wink. There's one coming up December 3rd. So <laughs> Yes. All right. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week.